Okay, now finally, last video, John Cheever. I had to change my shirt because I got salsa on the other one. Let's go ahead and phase him in here. There he is. What do you know about him? Just some small uh, facts about his work. He, in some ways, is one of the early American writers of the suburban experience. And uh, he talks about that strangeness, a kind of emotional uh, disquiet that's underneath what seems to be kind of like the perfect middle class lifestyle that is emerging in the 1950s uh, in the United States, especially in New York after World War II, um, just north of the city in Westchester area, Westchester County. This picture here of him is really, uh, really, uh, I think, telling and works really well with his short stories because got him standing in front of a commuter train. And a lot of people that live outside of the city will commute in for an hour every day. So that's part of the suburban experience, commuting to work. The very luckiest of us get to take, you know, something like a train where we don't have to worry about actually uh, paying attention and driving cars. Um, and people on the West Coast and other large metropolitan areas uh, really luck out in that. So, so uh, holding in his hand a coffee mug um, and commuting and coffee go together. So it's a very iconic shot. I also like the perspective on it. Uh, there may be some liquor in there too. He had a bit of a drinking problem. Um, but I'll t uh, what, what else can I say about that? There's a certain unhappiness uh, and uh, lack of satisfaction underneath kind of like material perfection and cons consumerism perfection of a lot of these suburbs and his stories. And uh, for him in his own life, part of that was exacerbated by uh, him being gay and not feeling uh, safe or uh, able to come out and live his life. Uh, so he kept it a secret. But his stories are very, very interesting because they, they, they take like the everyday stuff and put in un unbelievable or almost fantastical elements and you will see like uh, stories shuttling back and forth between hero almost epic elements and figures to just terrible uh, pathetic unheroic uh, base aspects of those same people and locations and here's another great shot um, <laughs> Semiotic analysis of 30 seconds. I forgot to wrote that. So if we were to look at this picture again, I mean, this is a really beautiful uh, suburban location. You've got this nice uh, genteel stone wall and these nice uh, stone steps leading up and what looks to be like perhaps the perfect dog that would be in the background of this suburban home. And then look at Cheever in this picture. He just looks so kind of... Uh, down and out like it just isn't enough and we see that same kind of like dissatisfaction that same kind of discontent lurking under the surface in the short story we're reading uh the swimmer um the protagonist in it um starts off in this epic uh almost uh quest to swim through all the swimming pools in his neighborhood from one backyard to another on his way back home. And along the way, um, he, be he begins to see things are not as what he thought they were. And um, that heroic epic uh, in terms of narrative and in terms of the character, Nettie, um, begin to crumble and give way to a much grimmer reality. Um, so in some ways, again, it is showing how the suburbs, even though there's a certain material uh, envy, enviability about them, um, 
tied levels of social and psychological and interpersonal disconnect, discontent. Um, part of this is in some of the class relations that are uh, that are highlighted in the story. You can even talk. You can even do an analysis of which names. Um, are in the better part of the neighborhood and their relationship to ethnicities. Um, you can also look at the way he thinks about the public swimming pool at one point. Oh, I'm giving away a little bit of the narrative, but not too much. Um, you can also uh, look at the way in which even his particular suburb, Nettie suburb called Bullet Park is named. I mean, if you think about it, that's that's such an an interesting post World War II name because lots of cities and suburbs have the name Park in them: Roner Park, Villa Park, Monterey Park, etc. Um, and it gives this kind of sense of you know an idyllic or peaceful uh, place to live with greenery. Um, but to put the word bullet in front of it kind of foregrounds the fact that um, there's a shadow of a huge military event hanging over this suburb. And that being the Second World War. And you could even extend that military shadow, that warlike shadow, to include now um, uh, the shadow of nuclear war. Um, the Cold War is really gearing up during this period too. And people are, you know, really, really angsting under the notion that, you know, an, an atomic war could wipe everything they know off the face of the earth. So there's some very large existential uh, anxieties uh, put into this story. Um, the other things that you can think about, uh, just shifting back into the story real fast, is the way in which Nettie criticizes in his own mind um, different neighbors and how they act. So there's a certain uh, secretive uh, pettiness about the way Nettie thinks about these people, even though he's perfectly fine uh, to their faces. And I think we've all been in that experience before too, where people are so kind and neighborly, but you know, behind their behind your back, they're you know, eh, just being petty and mean um, about things that really don't matter all that much. Add into that. Uh, that suburban middle class lifestyle, uh, a persistent sense of drinking. Um, post World War, I guess you could say throughout the 20th century, um, uh, drinking alcohol has been, you know, a recurring theme, but it really ramps up in post World War II stories um, and fiction for some reason. I think part of it is. It's one more accoutrement of a, a successful life, right? You've got the money, you just you drink whenever you want. Um, and again, like the science and the psychology behind drinking, behind uh, addiction to alcohol, still hasn't really come online yet. So be on the lookout for how that how that works into into the story. You may also uh, be familiar with uh, the AMC series Mad Men. Mad Men very well um, portrays uh, the scene, the time and the place of John Cheever and his short stories, including The Swimmer. It's post-World War II. There's a certain set, set uh, sense of abundance and um, material desire. And the drinking and the smoking that goes on through that that whole series also uh, is of a similar vein that you see in Cheaper stories. And Mad and uh, the protagonist of uh, Mad Men, Don Draper, does live outside of the city, at least in the early in the early seasons. Um, so you can really see that environment in play if you kind of want to get like a visual for its style. Um, if you're into design, it's a fantastic show for that too. But you also get a sense of like the role of kind of social competition uh, and drinking plays within that era, but not that time and place. 
Now I've really gone off, but that's about all I've got to say about John Cheever and the swimmer. I uh, hope you enjoy the story. And remember, uh, I've already posted in the very first video, uh, American Lit 45 to present, what will be uh, our discussion topics for the week coming up. So enjoy and I'll see you soon.